My name is Mr. Deal. I'm the instructor for the plumbing repair class at Victor Valley College, class number CTMT-121. We've just completed talking about the uh, lavatories and now uh, today I'm going to show you some about the kitchen sinks and the difference between a kitchen sink or a, and a lavatory or a sink and a lavatory is that a lavatory is where you wash your hands. A kitchen sink is the sink that you'd see in a kitchen. A mop sink is a sink that you would see in a, in a mop closet where you did uh, mopping and things like that. So today we're going to focus on kitchen sinks. And there are as many different ways to install a kitchen sink as there are ways to install a lavatory. So this particular kitchen sink is a drop-in stainless steel sink. You can see that the, the, the metal ridge here is such that it just sits on top of the hole that was made in the countertop. We will put caulking underneath that to seal it. If we were to measure this sink, we would measure it the same way that we did um, the, uh, the lavatories. From the edge of that side to the edge here is 32 inches. From here to here is 21. So this would be a 32 by 21 inch sink which is, by the way, the standard for sinks, they're 32 by 21. This sink has two compartments, or two basins. Uh, we normally talk uh, about them as having compartments. Uh, there is a ledge back, this, this wide part back here where we mounted the faucet, and this would be either for a hose and spray or for the air gap for a, a dishwasher. But this is the ledge back, the back ledge of the sink. This actually is the preferred way because if, if and when this faucet leaks, it's not going to get your countertop wet and cause it to, to fall apart. Sometimes when we have a sink that has an extra hole in it and we're not going to put anything in there, we'll cover that hole up with a faucet hole cover, just like that. Underneath it, uh, we have a, a large flange and a, a screw, a nut. I put it on right. And then that sits down in there and covers it up. So that's a faucet hole cover. This faucet is a single lever faucet. It, it uh, doesn't have a hot and a cold. However, we see from the, the canopy on this that it is for an 8 inch center set uh, type sink. The drain here is, is called a basket strainer. This is the, the, actually this is the basket and you can see it has holes in it and it sits down in there and if you turn it one way it will seal the, the sink. You turn it the other way and it lifts it up and holds it above so that water can go down, but any uh, debris will be caught in there and not go down the drain. This also has a garbage disposer on one side. Uh, looks like it's a little dusty. That's all right. And there is a guard in here that keeps, supposed to keep things from falling in too much. You can't see it very well, but there's a name here. And when you install a garbage disposer, you want that name to be up straight and square with the sink so it can be red. So let's look underneath and see what's under the sink. We'll see that the garbage disposer sits down here. It mounts with a, a locking clamp. There's a nipple here, which would, is where we would hook the garbage disposer to this, or the, the dishwasher. Uh, drain to that. This uh, in a new garbage disposer is sealed. Uh, when this was cast, it's solid plastic behind here and we have to remember to take a screwdriver in there and break that little plastic plug out of there before we try to uh, drain the dishwasher. It'll run all over the kitchen. This uh, drain comes straight across, it comes into a diverter T and down into the trap. Uh, this is the bottom of the basket strainer and it mounts with a rubber washer on the bottom, a friction ring which you can't see, the jam nut which is here, and then we have the uh, slip joint nuts 
that come down here. So let's look at some other types of sinks. This is another uh, way to mount a sink. This one has the metal mounting rim, and you remember that with the lavatories. And um, when you replace a, a fixture that has a metal, metal mounting rim, you always want to plan to buy the mounting rim with the fixture itself because they'll all be uh, a little different in size and the way they attach. This is a enameled steel sink. You can hear the hollow sound and you see what happens with enameled steel when somebody drops something on it. It chipped the enamel off and uh, that's beginning to rust and here's another rusty place here. This faucet happens to be an 8 inch center set, it's not mounted. Uh, we, the two faucets, two, two handles, uh, we know the, the size of it because we can measure from the middle of one handle to the middle of the other handle and it'll measure 8 inches. This is standard for a kitchen sink. The other sizes are 6 inch and then of course they have the widespread but that's very uncommon. There is another uh, type of installation that we don't show here, and that's where they would mount the sink faucet on the wall. Many times in apartments, older apartments, where space is at a premium, rather than taking up the space for a ledge back mount like this is, uh, they would mount it on the wall and then the sink itself could go all the way back to the wall. Again, uh, this would be for a uh, uh, hose and spray, the uh, vacuum breaker for a uh, dishwasher, or uh, you could actually put uh, a lotion dispenser in there. Because this hole is on the right hand side of the sink, we would call this a four hole sink. And by the way, this, this is standard. It's a 32 by 21, 32 by 21, four hole sink on the right. Uh, beige uh, pressed metal kitchen sink. The hole could be over here on the left if we ordered it, if it was a four hole on the left. Or we may decide to order a sink that has five holes. Uh, if we had a, a dishwasher with an air gap and we also wanted a hose and spray and we also wanted to have a lotion dispenser, there are special drills that we can drill this without chipping the enamel and add as many holes in here uh, as they want. Oftentimes there will be a, a water treatment system and from one of the holes will be a spout, a gooseneck spout for the treated water. We have another one over here right next to it and this you'll see again is a, uh, has a, a stainless steel mounting rim but in this case, the mounting is on the, the countertop. So this would be a countertop mounted faucet. Not really a good way to go because if, not, not when, not if, but when, you get water up here and the water gets underneath this faucet, it will get into the wood material that made the countertop and it'll destroy it. So this is, is not, this would be your last choice for a kitchen sink again. You can tell that it's metal. It's enameled metal. Uh, you can see the rusty spot here where somebody dropped a, a dish or something on it. And uh, so now we're gonna go look at the, the details of the parts under, underneath the sink that, that connect it up and make it all work. Okay, now we're gonna look at the parts that go under the sink that connect the drain. That seems to be the part that is the most unfamiliar with most people. So here I have uh, what we call an end outlet uh, connection. You can see that I have the basket strainers on here. Uh, they come down. Uh, this is a flange tailpiece. The tailpiece is the part that comes out of the tail of the drain. This is a waist L. It's an elbow that comes over to a diverter T into a P-trap. And you'll remember that the function of a P-trap is that it will lay full of water and it stops sewer gases from coming through here 
and coming up the sink into the kitchen. So this is not to catch uh, materials. This is to stop the sewer gases from being able to come back into the house. So let's look at uh, some other parts. This is for a center outlet drain. This would where we would have the each uh, compartment of the sink would be over each one of these and this would drain out the middle. So this is a center outlet. This one is like the end outlet and in fact it is an end outlet but it's made for a garbage disposer to go on this end. And uh, these joints here are, are slip joint no, slip joint joints and we call them slip joint because they slide, they slip back and forth. So this is adjustable, makes it really handy to work with. So I'm going to start with the diverter T. This is the diverter T and the, when the water comes in here, there's a baffle in here that diverts the water down. And I don't know if you can see that baffle in there or not. Okay. So without this baffle in here, if we had this connected to the garb disposer, and the garb disposer is really a pump. And so we turn on the garbage disposer and it pumps water here. It would come up, it could very easily and often would come up into the other sink compartment, which would not be a good thing if we had clean dishes or clean vegetables in that compartment. So this diverter T diverts water downwards. And you always want to look to make sure that you have a diverter T when you connect the two sides of the sink. This center outlet, if you were to look at it, you would see that there is a diverter on both sides of it. So that the water cannot be uh, transferred from one side of the sink to the other, keeping it uh, sanitary. The uh, waste L, this is a waste L, and it's just an elbow. And this is a very short radius elbow. And um, we have a, it's plain on one end, threaded on the other. This uh, thread is inch and a half pipe size, by the way. And you, you may notice that this inner side is beveled. All of these slip joint connections will be beveled so that a beveled washer will fit in here and as it's tightened, it, that bevel part forces it down around the tube and makes the seal. The other one is a extension elbow. Here's the, whoop, here's the slip and extension tube. If our tubes are too short, we would use an extension tube. And uh, I'm going to extend this flange tailpiece I put the nut on first, almost every time. Put the slip joint washer on so that the beveled end will go into here. And I can get a little, there's a little bit of an adjustment in there where I can adjust the sizes. This nut then tightens that slip joint washer on there and makes a tight seal. So now I have extended the length of my tube from a foot long almost to two feet long. So with this plastic, we just cut it with a saw, with a hacksaw or any kind of tool that some, I've seen some people cut it with a pocket knife. This is a flanged tailpiece. You notice it just has a flange on the end of it. That flanged tailpiece is the it will fit to the basket strainer. With a, a metal nut. And a special gasket. This, this gasket fits down inside and forms on there. And that goes together.
and that makes the connection from the basket strainer down to your drain system. We call this washer that's in here, it has a special name, we call it a sink coupling nut washer. Amazing, isn't it? Now, why is it important to know the names of all of these parts? Because these parts form a system, and that system is how we drain a sink. And if you have a question or you need to order a part, you have to speak the language. You have to know the names of the parts. Otherwise, how will anyone know what you want or what you're uh, dealing with? This, this fitting here is a disposer elbow. And it goes on the disposer right here. And it would go down perhaps into a strainer like uh, this. And then the other side would go over to the other sink to the other basin, perhaps like this. Now, the disposer elbow comes with a disposer. So a lot of people think that they must use it. But if you have a sink set up like this, which is the way I see it done a lot of times. Look what you've done. You've got one elbow and two elbows. Every elbow restricts the flow coming out of the disposer. And when you restrict the flows so that you fall below your two feet per second flow rate, you're gonna create stoppages. So the better way to go is to go straight in to the disposer if, you're, if, if that's the way it is, now your other sink would be here, your trap it would be on this side of the sink, is that you use this, and this flange bolts, on. bolts onto the side of the disposer and makes the joint. If your trap is on the same side of the sink as your disposer, then you would use the disposer elbow and go straight down into the top of the trap. When we bring the hose from a dishwasher, and again, remember that this opening here is usually sealed. This one's been opened, but on a new one, if you try to put a pencil or something in there, it's sealed, it's, it's plugged. And you have to take a, I take a screwdriver and just break the plug out of there. But this is where the drain hose from the air gap would be. And so this, this would go up to the top of the sink to the vacuum breaker. And we need a vacuum breaker because if the drain plugged up and the sink was full of dirty water, it would drain from here right down into the dishwasher and all of your clean dishes would be soiled with dirty water or it would fill up the dishwasher, the dishwasher has a small pan in it, and leak uh, nasty water all over the floor. The air gap is something that we're gonna talk about later, uh, but it's one of the secrets that plumbers use to keep the, the waste water separate from the potable water so that we don't contaminate our potable water with waste water. Um, what else do we have here? We have the P-trap. And again, I talked to you a little bit about a P-trap. This, this is a plastic P-trap. It's, it's white, so it's PVC. Uh, the black ones will be ABS. Uh, we have brass ones that are chrome-plated uh, and brass that's not chrome-plated. This forms a union nut, a union joint. This is the same thread as the slip joint thread up here but you can see that this is, this is formed here to receive this round surface. There are codes that say that you cannot have a slip joint fitting on the drain side of a trap. So this would be where the, your continuous waste comes out of the sink, comes into the trap. And after this water seal, if one of these, if this were a slip joint fitting, 
they used to be made out of leather and the leather would dry and crack and eventually it would let sewer gases leak into the house. And so this is in part a holdover from that, that ruling. But so this is a joint that does not depend on any kind of a gasket to make its joint. And that's why they do it that way. Uh, many times I uh, see a plumber or someone will install the, the trap this way. And then they try to put the drain in here and try to get it to hold, but it just is not made for that. And in time this will pop out. The trap has a prescribed depth. This, this, the depth of this trap would be from here all the way down to, you know, this would be the exit point right here. So we have such a distance here that um, uh, we would end up with stoppages because it could not scour itself. So a deep pattern trap, which this would be one if we did it this way, uh, would, would create stoppages and we only use that when we have very unusual conditions, but you can actually order a deep pattern trap. This trap, you notice it goes straight down and then there's a part that turns here and with a gentle curve. These are all shaped, especially in these shapes, to scour this trap so that it doesn't fill up with debris when it's being used. And we call it a pea trap because it looks like a pea. Okay, that's it. Okay, I want to show you there are basically three types of sinks, kitchen sinks. The, the first sink was only one compartment with the, the drain here on one side. On the side of this, we would draw it like this. and the basket strainer would be here. Now, in one of these sinks, if you were to wash dishes, you would put a pan inside of this, and you would wash in one, you would rinse under the water, or you'd have another pan next to it, and it was uh, pretty simple. Then we came up with a two compartment sink. I'll draw this a little bit smaller so it'll fit. Now this would have the three holes in it here for an eight inch center set. The basket strainer would sit in the middle and we would draw that sink like this. On the side view. And this center portion would normally be lower than the flood so that if one sink overflowed and stopped up it would have a chance to overflow into the other side of the sink that may not. So if you started out with a single compartment sink, you had an old fashioned kitchen. And when you got to upgrade to a two compartment sink, that was really something for all the other ladies in the neighborhood to be envious of. Then we came up with a better idea, and it is a three compartment sink. This would be perhaps the center compartment. There's your basket strainer, the basket strainer, and the garbage disposer would be in the middle. Of course, your faucet would be here. And of course, you'd have a hose and spray on there also. So if you bought a house that had a two compartment sink, and you got a three compartment sink, you also got a full kitchen remodel because this sink probably wouldn't fit this drain board. So you were the envy of all the ladies in your neighborhood. Then with the advent of dishwashers and all of these sorts of things, having all these smaller basins got to be kind of a nuisance. So somebody came up with a great idea a one compartment sink. 
awesome. I can put anything in this sink. I can do anything. My big pots and pans will fit. It, life is wonderful. And all the ladies in the neighborhood are envious of you.